So mm. anger, mm, so anger, that's one way, going to non-form. Uh, in the 12-step groups, the addiction groups, we talk about, yeah, you, you can wallow, you can make it last longer by going into a big story about it, so try not to do that. But for me, even more, just let go of engaging in thoughts, and just, uh, it's like allowing, purely welcoming yeah. the feeling. And have courage. Um, one of the things in addiction, like I've, I've tried to help a lot of people in addiction, is you have a primary thought of why you should not go through the feeling. You know, it'll be like, don't face this feeling because mm. this will happen. You must never do it. Um, everyone's got a different thought, funny enough. You know, my thought mm. was, don't mm. go through the feeling, you'll die. Mine is because it will not go away. You okay. Know, it's come up never never now. Now. Yeah. So, mm. so that's a common one for for yeah. for. See, all in theory, it. I just gave that speech about emotions, and you know, it only yes. lasts a few minutes. But here, it just feels like it's never going to end. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's a common one. It's mm. never going to end. Mm. So don't don't try. You know, you you not last the course. Do something not to go through it. Or sometimes you try, and then after three seconds, you see it's not ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the purchasing of thoughts, mm. you know, that's the, that's the gateway of the ego, guarding, yes. guarding yes. that you do not go through these feelings that's at any right. costs. Yeah. So he, the thoughts come, they're different for yes. everyone, like it'll last, it'll, it'll go on forever, so just chicken out, mm. you know, just don't, don't go. And another thought comes, you know, oh, you tried it for one second, so yes. okay, give up now, so it didn't work. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, mm. But those are the thoughts, so it's like, you know, so the attitude for me is to face your worst thought. Mm. You've got to face whatever it is. Yeah. I had I had one person who was a food addict, and um, she um, uh, she I forgot what her thought was, but whatever it was, I told her, look, if you never face it, you'll actually get worse, mm. uh, and uh, uh, and you just never face your feelings, and you're an addict, so you just got to stop using that because mm. it's actually destroying your life. Mm. And she said, no, I can't face it, and she wouldn't face it. <laughs> and in 12-step recovery, because addicts are really like, we don't want to feel our feelings at all. We have to use anything. Mm. So addicts, you know, we have a lot of experience. And every addict who's gone through the test of like going through the, the, those initial tests, we call it withdrawal in addiction, going through and not chickening out, you know, gets, you can mm. phone up someone or use the support of the spiritual group. Uh, or phone up someone, Every, anyone's free to phone me up if they're going through a difficult feeling, I'll tell you it's safe to go through. Um, and you just go through, and, 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 you, and for me the thing was, mine was, you know, you're going to suffocate, you're going to die, so you might as well chicken out straight away. Mm. It was like, okay, I took the uh, Hawkins advice, which is you you're not going to die, but you know, you have to have the courage. I had the courage to sit with that feeling and not chicken out. And I was willing to face the worst possible fear, which was that, you know, I'm just going to drop down dead. So you have that kind of attitude, I call it the spiritual warrior attitude. You know, you've got to sort of psych yourself up. The next time I get angry, you know, when it comes, I'm not going to engage in thoughts or stories, but, you know, even if it's unending, I'm going to sit with it for however long it takes, or just sit, sit with it. Generally speaking, um, and, and, or, at least try and improve the length of time you sit with it before you chicken out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, uh, yesterday the, the anger came upon me. I, I normally go into a room and just try and sit with it until it passes. So even if you can do like, try your best to have a spirituality and sit with it for like one minute, you mm -hmm. know, and then, and then, and then if you still, the thoughts will come relentlessly, like chicken out. Mm -hmm. You, it's going to last forever, there's no point to it, you, you're going to explode, or whatever it is. So the thoughts will come incessantly, but ignore them. And then just try and increase your length. Mm -hmm. But if you've got real courage, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, go, go through it. Or give me a call, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. I've helped lots of uh, addicts for many, many years go through the worst nightmare of feeling their feelings until they pass. Mm -hmm. I, I share one story. I had a one... one um, one girl, because I'm a food addict, uh, every time she had a difficult feeling, it could be anger or grief or whatever, she would eat food. And I said to her, look, just sit with your feelings and they'll pass. And she looked at me like I was spe speaking an alien language, like, you know, it's never going to pass, you know, that's crazy. So I said to her, you know, this is a true story, I said to her, do you feel hungry right now? Um, and she said, yes, okay, let's sit, because... She didn't want to feel her hunger or any difficult feeling and eat straight away. So I said, okay, let's sit down. I'm going to sit with you until it passes. 
And after about 15 minutes, it was for her as well, 15 minutes, it passed. I said, are you hungry now? He said, no. And it was the first experience she ever had in her life of going through a feeling and realizing that it passed because her whole life, mm -hmm. you know, she never went through until it passed. She had to like escape before it, she, she got through to the end. Mm -hmm. And then and she became abstinent, you know, she became abstinent from her addiction mm -hmm. and she faced the, the worst thing. So it's that powerful yeah. that hundreds of alcoholics, drug addicts, overeaters around the world, millions of them, mm -hmm. by this simple protocol of facing your worst feeling. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so I have absolute conviction if you go through, the anger will eventually pass or it will get easier and you actually get well. But yeah. hold, holding in and always escaping is yeah. still trapped in there. Mm -hmm. It may even manifest in a psychological oh, or, or yeah. uh, migraines, uh, all kinds of uh, things. Well, I yeah. don't mind sharing, but yeah. I was Please. a food addict for years. Oh, okay. I was a limit for 10 years. Okay. It used to be bigger. Yes. Much bigger. Yeah, so I was, I am really familiar with that, you know, just eat your feeling up and yes. I, I believe back then it was, I was really young, I was like a teenager, yes. so I'm guessing it was a lot of anger and sadness and I'm a lot better, you know, I'm fully recovered from the eating side of things, now, although sometimes when I get stressed I would do the same thing. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, I do know what you're talking about and I do really agree. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I find the, the, mm -hmm. the lessons, the daily, daily lessons <coughs> in the Course in Miracles are invaluable yes. uh, when, when anger or resentment arises. Okay. Okay. Only my thoughts can hurt me and all of these. Yeah. Because uh, when you do it all the time, you, and, and I can see now why they want you to do it, try and think of it every hour and stuff, which I've never been ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but it, I, it just gets in there. And when something yes. arises, yeah. it, mm -hmm. it's just because I, I found proof of that last night, because it, it, um, it was spoiling my beautiful, because uh, I, I, after many, many years, I got in touch with a, uh, an old friend I loved very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had a lot to share, so we share, share everything. This is one of the, uh, the uh, most fun people <laughs> I've, I've met in a lifetime. And it's kind of spoiled it that I brought this up, but uh, you know we, we both know the, the, the person who instigated. So, uh, and, but uh, it didn't last very long. Once I put the phone down, I just sat there, and I was back to what I feel like is hundred percent forgiveness, and then that's how I feel at this moment. During that ten years when I was a food addict, I never felt. Never felt anger. Like I never get angry. Mm. None. But that's You're clearly unhealthy. Yeah, it's yeah. clearly unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, I was covering it up. Maybe. You were not aware that it was there at all. Probably not. Also yeah. 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 No, I think. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I think anger is a very interesting one because I mean, for me, I've done a lot of stuff over the years, and I had a very because I had a very complex uh, childhood, and I remember whoever I was going to. It's not that I'm not angry. I'm angry, for example, if you know, if I'm put and I have so many options on the phone and I'm being put on hold. But I remember so many years I was saying, oh, you, you know, you, you know, you need to feel the anger. There must be an anger in your childhood, and I can never feel it. And it took me many, many years later on, suddenly, you know, many years, and and I thought, gosh, it's there. There is anger there. And I thought, it's it's kind of it's one of those things possibly that is very. Mm. Mm. It's very buried, yes, in the, you know. It's just yeah. kind of. It's, it's a very interesting one, yeah. Angie. I mean, it took yeah. me almost, you know, I would say really into twenty years or something, yeah. kind of to almost like get in touch with yeah. that part that I was, you know, that part of my child that I was yeah. angry. So, but I remember I was doing ten sessions with this woman, three hour sessions. You know, and all along she kept saying, oh, you know, maybe, you know, just do, you know, you need to work on, you know, there must be anger. Yeah. And it's an interesting one. I think anger yeah. is a very well, interesting, it, it, took me a long time. something you have to deal with. I never quite understood yeah. why. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, I turned it against myself as when I was bulimic, obviously. Yes. I think, oh, it's my problem. Mm. Yeah. So now I don't have that, but I have lots of irritation. <laughs> like, mouthful of anger, I'd say. 
It's good. <coughs> in in the um, in the food fellowships uh, where I go to, I've had many years in there, uh, uh, and also helping others. Uh, it's normal what what you say. So you, like I help bulimics, anorexics, overeaters, and um, so you numb out when you whatever behaviour you mm -hmm. use, whether it's anorexia, overeating, or bulimia, and then as you tell them stop the behaviour, mm -hmm. so they can't numb out on whatever it is. Um, they go into the crisis. Then it's a great, it's, yeah. great, it's a, lot, a lot of, because all that suppressed feelings now come out like a volcano. Mm -hmm. And then you, you help them with the spiritual program not to act out again in the behavior. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, I yeah. tell them, it'll be like a volcano for a while, uh, because these feelings are coming up. You want, basically, you know, they, mm -hmm. either someone will walk in front of them from the tube, they want to kill them or murder them or something. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much rage and anger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I think yeah. it's important to, to deal with it, and, and the younger the better. Because uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you, and they, because of my age group, I meet a lot of older people, yes. and a lot of them are really bitter. Age is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> like they, they, they just have, you can tell that they've got a lot of rage, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that they've never dealt with, so it manifests in, in all sorts of diseases and, and mm -hmm. infirmity. And, yeah, yeah. 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 It has also got that like tail end of sadness because yes. once I feel out the anger, I'll normally cry <laughs> yeah. for a really long time. So it's like almost like sadness with a bit mm -hmm. of a, a head and it coming out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but when I, when I put down my food behaviours, and even when I like make some other ones meaningless, like when yeah. I go through recovery, um, as I said with yeah. you, I cancelled all my beliefs in the meaning of like different foods and the excitement of foods because I used to do this thing yeah. where I'd like. Um, when I put down sort of the really bad behaviours, I still do stuff like want to be super healthy or like perfection mm -hmm. and still obsessions. Um, I, I would do that instead of feeding stuff. Yeah. So I'd do that and then when I cancelled my beliefs in it, my ego got so angry. <laughs> it was just yeah. like, but it's meaningless. And I was like, damn. I was <laughs> as attached to starving as I, I was as addicted to yeah. starving as I was to eating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's anything that my mind's like, thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And then mm -hmm. the feeling just goes down. But, um, mm. but yeah, like every time something went, more anger would come up like a little pop mm. and then I'd cry. <laughs> Uh, what I find it very interesting, you know, it's just kind of, uh, as we were talking about being with the feelings, that, you know, the amazing power of the ego mind, you know, that the thought that comes up or, you know, whatever it was for you or whatever, it's the other person, it's just a way of keeping us there, really, because the ego knows if you're going to be with that feeling, whatever that is, you're going to be free. Yes. So it comes up with all sorts of kind of different, you know, thoughts, and I think I find it quite... Fascinating, actually. This is, and it's so almost like you know, so creative in coming up with so many different, you know, uh, reasons really why you shouldn't be with that, you know, feeling whatever that is. Yes, mm. uh, and since it's of course in miracles, you know, de dealing with that because Hawkins had gone through operations without using anaesthetic, and we um, shared before, it's like you, you you're connected to the spiritual realm when you're when you're willing to feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and he'd went through. I, you know, I had a kidney transplant, so I had the general anaesthetic, but then I was absolutely determined not to have any any more painkillers after that. So I refused the mor morphine pump. I told the nurse not to give me any painkillers with my medication, and I just felt I felt the pain, which was pretty horrific actually um, uh, after a major operation. But just sitting with the pain, 100% presence with the pain, mm -hmm. and um, and. I just cut a long story short, you know, I got up, the doctor was really, really impressed on how fast I healed. You know, I got out of bed and he was really, really impressed that I had taken no painkillers and I just I was able to get out of bed the fastest of all the other people there that had the painkillers. So it's like, on that realm, you, whatever it is, for me there's, there's nothing you can't go through. And I've had, uh, going through panic attacks and then the cessation of panic attacks, going through experiencing pain. Uh, and going into non-form, don't label it, just be 100% present with it, it passes. Mm -hmm. um, also, this is the thing, with, if you cancel your beliefs and feel all your feelings, illnesses start to leave you, you know, gout leaves you, asthma leaves you, you just, um, so you can sit with the anger, uh, and eventually it's like, the, in the beginning if you have a lot of anger, it'll be like tranches, they'll come up in waves, you just ride them through. Mm -hmm. But the very first time, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is to, on the first occasion, is to 
have the courage to have the experience that you can go through the feeling of that it does actually pass. Once you have that experience, then you're, you're on the way up because you now have experience that uh, the illness always says never go through because it'll last forever or, 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 or you know, it's already, you know, it doesn't go away after three seconds, so you just give up. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, it is, it is difficult mm -hmm. the first time, but after you go through, then you have courage. Mm -hmm. The other me mechanism for dealing um, with uh, anger is to go, is what Ruji does, uh, teaches, which is to go to the observer or the witnessing field. So, what is, so let's say, um, you know, uh, that anger comes up. So it'll be, there might be a voice saying, I am angry, you know, but the anger and the thoughts are actually both being observed. So if you go to that which is observing, then you can just allow whatever happens to happen without attachment. Uh, any attachment, uh, you know, a, a thought, well, go to, I mean, you're not the thought, that which is observing the thought, just stay in that which is observing the thought. The anger, you don't need to get interested, just allow it to be, and you just witness it and observe it occurring. So that's the other mechanism of going through ang anger.